Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and we're doing a cup of tea with Captain Steve. Now, I was thinking about doing separate little mini cups of teas with Captain Steve, just covering individual subjects, but I figured these subjects aren't too broad, they're not too large, so I might as well just do one episode that covers a whole repertoire of entertaining stuff. So anyway, let, let's jump on over onto the old um, Tinterweb. Well, actually, let's jump to my TV first. And let's have a look at some entertainment news, shall we, people? chicka pow chicka -boom. Right, so first off is The Boys Season 4. Now, I'm pretty much up to date with these. I've seen pretty much every episode that's out there right now. I think there's five, and I've seen all five of them. Now, what I would say is seasons one and two were freaking great because it was all character building. Season three, I think, moved more towards really, really in-your-face gore and vulgarness to sort of, like, carry it a bit. And story came second. Season four leans even heavier into that. It's almost like shock content. What can we do to shock them in this episode? Yeah, do that. That'll be funny. And it is. It's funny. It's in your face. But for somebody like Ivy, my partner, she went from liking seasons one and two and saying, you know, it was brilliant to season three going, I'm not sure whether I like this anymore to season four. She goes, she goes out to the garden while I'm watching it or she, she goes and does some housework or something while I'm watching it. She doesn't want to watch it. She says it's just too much. It's just too much vulgarness and too much gore for her liking. And she also doesn't like the fact that there's two political parties in here. One that looks like it's MAGA driven, you know, make America great again. And another one that looks like it's completely left leaning to the extremes on both sides. And although that it's a parody of real world, the reason that you watch a show like this is to escape real world. And she feels that there's too much politics in there. And to a degree, I, I feel that they're ribbing both sides, right and left. And sometimes equally, sometimes not. Sometimes it's a little bit more left leaning, but I can kind of sort of just, you know, get through that because the story has been so good that it sort of like carries it through. I mean, the story is still there. They're still trying to take out Homelander yeah, you know, through any means necessary. And those means that are necessary are getting slimmer and slimmer and they're getting more and more desperate. And the story is still there. And there's still some fantastic characters inside of this that just carry it through. And the script is still great. You're still not going to have those weird sort of things. But why? Why did that happen? Why did that happen? Why did that happen? It all still makes sense. It doesn't feel like things have been shooned horned in. This is not a Disney show. And I like it still for that. You know, I'm still watching the old Disney shows. I'm going to be doing The Acolyte in a moment. And the actual, it, the polar opposites, it's it's night and day. I still love the boys. I'm still giving this a solid like 9 out of 10. But I need more story in there and less of all the things I mentioned earlier, people. Okay, chums, so next off, Disney show, The Acolyte. And this is, a, I can't remember what episode we're on now. Is this episode 5 as well or something? But anyway, we've got like the dark Sith that's just turned up. And he is a Sith because he actually says, I'm a freaking Sith. Or you would call me a Sith, the similar of. I mean, he could be a Wayfinder or whatever you want to call them or a Grey. But he's got a freaking red freaking lightsaber. He's using the dark side of the force. I'm going to say he's a freaking Sith because he says he's a Sith. I know there was a whole load of shenanigans around that and people saying, well, he's not. He, he could be a witch or something like that. It's a bit of an odd one. Some things that I find a little bit odd with this, you know, he's supposed to be the master of May, yet he only looks maybe 10 years the senior. And considering that she was picked up at six years old, that'd probably make him close to 16 maybe when he took her on as a, as a learner. I don't know. It just feels a little bit, really? How did you get so powerful? Who's your master? There just seems to be lots of gaping plot holes inside of this. It's like... In the other one, Osha got really upset when they killed a bug accidentally. In this one, she gets a whole load of bugs to come down and swarm this Darth Sith who kills them all. She didn't care then. It's okay when you do it. There's just loads of polar opposites inside of this one that just feel a little bit weird. It's like May says, right, I'm going to turn myself into the Jedi. Sod this Darth Sith or whatever his name is, Smilo Ren. I'm going to go join the Jedi. She meets the Jedi, the one that looks like Jitara out of freaking Thundercats. Does she turn herself in? No, she resists arrest. She even tries to shank her. It's like, 
one minute you want to turn yourself in, you've got the prime opportunity to turn yourself in and you go freaking knifey knifey on them. And, uh, there's just too many gaping plot holes inside the storyline. What I liked about this one, though, was the actual Darth Sif uses a certain metal that when he blocks things, it actually disables the lightsaber. It's Koshin or something like that. It's actually deep inside the comic book lore. It's a real substance in the Star Wars universe, not just shoehorned in for Disney for this episode or this series. It's an actual thing. So they have brought in some things from lore and done deep dive and done their research. So, you know, in some places, I would say, well, fair enough, Disney. Well done, you. Massive round of applause. But the story writing, the characters and the acting is just... I've seen fan made that's been better than this. So this is still a 6 out of 10, in my opinion. Okay, so the next thing, let's just jump on over onto my Tinterwebs for you, is the No Man's Sky Meetup 2024, taking place on the 25th of August at 6 of the PMs at the Free Pigeons Pub in Guildford in England. Now... I have had a banner made for this. It looks pretty darn freaking nice. Let me just make myself a little bit bigger on the old screen. Here we go. Let's grab my banner that I made. I say I made. I designed it. Now I just jumped on Amazon. Found a company that prints these things, you know. A promotional company. I used to work in a promotional company. It's called One Stop Promotions, where I used to work years ago when I first left school. But I got this big banner. It's got, like, No Man's Sky, like little Apollo over there. And then over this way, it's got the last campfire on it. It's got Hello Games there. And then over this side, it's got a bit of Joe Danger. You know, so it's got a bit of everything. Now, I consciously left a load of white space on this because I'm thinking that whoever attends, I bring a load of, like, um, uh, marker pens for fabrics. And oh, I'll put that away later. It's going to take me a while to fold that and get it back in the box. But we can all sign it. And at least this fits through their letterbox. I mean, the other year we brought bloody pictures and boxes and things that wouldn't fit through the letterbox. And we had to knock the door for a member of staff to come down. And they didn't look too comfortable. I don't want to repeat that. So hopefully just put something through the letterbox. Or, hello games, if you have got a member of staff that's a little bit more sociable, <laughs> maybe put them in on the day. I don't know. But anyways... The No Man's Sky meetup is still going ahead. I've got all my bits 3D printed for the raffle. I mean, um, what have I got here? So I've got a little trophy here. This is one of them assembled. So I'm going to be bringing like one of these as like for quiz winners. And it would, hopefully one each. I've, I've printed like eight. So as long as we've got eight people per team, I've got enough to go around. But then I've also 3D printed like Atlas cards. I've got some No Man's Sky. Oh, well, I've got some Captain Steve Brew tea. And I've got an Atlas card that's got the Starborn Runner grafted to it as well. And I've got a little stand that you can put these in as well. And it's up to you which Atlas card you put facing forwards. Uh, and it just stands like that. Pretty nice. It says Meet Up 2024 on the bottom. It's got like a little Atlas symbol at the back. So no matter, no matter which way you display this thing, it's nice to look at from every angle. And I'm doing that with the Captain Steve Brew. And also, I've got like a portal dice in there to roll to get your portals and stuff like that. So I think this year I'm bringing along quite a fair bit of stuff, but not... You know, you're going to have to be lucky to get one in the raffle. I think I've got like 10, 10 batches of those as well. So not a great deal. I know Rice is also 3D printing a few bits too. So that's taken a bit of the burden away. And we are hoping to do online as well to have a Discord up and running where people can log in. And once I've got that link for the Discord, I'll put it inside of this video description and also on my No Man's Sky Meetup 2024 video description, I'll add it there. I'd also put it on my community tab to let people know once the Discord's been established. But I'm not sure whether we're hosting it in my Discord or in um, Miyogi's Discord because he's going to be running the online element. I'm giving him a load of my old merch from all my old logos and things like that, all my retro merch, the stuff that I don't wear on stream anymore because I've got a new logo. Yeah, I'm going to be giving all that away. Well, Miyogi will to the people online. So at least there's something to give online. 
But yeah, the No Man's Sky Meetup Market in Your Diaries, especially if you're in the UK, especially if you can make it, it'd be good to see you. So there's no RSVP thing. I mean, it'd be nice to know how many people are turning up. But at the same time, we've got quite a large venue that can host quite a lot of, house quite a lot of people. We're looking around 40 to 60 people that it can house comfortably. So yeah, as long as we don't go over that threshold, it's all good. But anyways, people, hopefully that's in your calendar. The No Man's Sky Meetup lovely jobs okay yeah. so next up i was going to do a whole feature piece on antarctica and strangeness and videos that you can find online now what i would say to you if you want to start getting into antarctica and the strangeness that is happening within and around antarctica or has happened in and around antarctica a good video to start off just type in project high jump Okay, so Project High Jump was a um, it was an it was a project name given to a military exercise during World Wars One or Two, and it was because the Nazis from Germany had gone up to Antarctica because they had heard that perhaps there was some sort of UFOs or alien tech there or some sort of weapons of God that they could utilize. So anyway, the US went to head them off there, find out what the fudge was going on. And there's a lot of strange tales around during Project High Jump. Now, a lot of this is documented in declassified military files. So a lot of it has actually got substantial evidence and proof behind it, okay? And you can see here, there's a Joe Rogan episode which is well worth a watch, but one of my favourite ones, just to sort of dip your toes in to see whether it is for you or not, is try the Y Files one. The Y Files. Now, I, I featured the Y Files last episode. He's got the little goldfish in a bowl and stuff. Brilliant channel. But yeah, he goes into the whole of Operation High Jump or Project High Jump. It's known as Eva Or. Give that a watch because that is freaking awesome to get yourself started. And then once you maybe watch the Joe Rogan one as well, you know, there is just searching Antarctica, frozen forest or anything like that. There's all sorts been found underneath the Antarctic ice caps that have got me super intrigued. And there's always new videos that pop up about Antarctica. You can see here about the whole massive sort of underground populace that they feel they found up in the Antarctica. But check out this little TikTok one. Here you go. I'll just hit this quickly. Video. Explore the uncharted uh, waters. I would like to mute country. that. And uh, where, where is the volume control? Oh, it's up here, is it, YouTube? Yeah, why not put everything where we know where it bloody is? As much as I like shorts, I don't like shorts. If, if I've wanted shorts, I'd go to bloody TikTok, you know? But anyways, check out the background on this little mini TikTok over here. I don't know whether I can actually scroll in and make that any bigger for you guys. Not really, no. I'd have to do it pre pre sort of edit but look in the background over here you see a massive wake look at the size of that wake but then look something's coming out of the ocean i don't know whether it's an ice sheet that's lifting up before it falls back down or something but look at the size of the wake that it causes all the way over the... it almost looks organic it doesn't look like an ice sheet weird weird i love weird when it comes to internet -y type stuff don't you I hope you do, because yeah, I, I like to bring a lot of that to you, to all your honest people. Now, this is where I would normally feature a channel. So I've got to think of a nice channel to throw your way for you guys to take a look at with your eye peepers. Okay, chums, now this channel is one that me and Ivy both like, mainly because it's based over in the Philippines, and it follows this couple that were over in Australia as fruit pickers. So they used to pick apples and things like that, but they decided that that was a little bit too much hard graft for their age. And I can sympathize with that. And they've also got a child and they wanted to bring them up in a place where they could actually afford a house, which in Australia, they can't. So they decided to up and move to the Philippines. Now, this is Marie Lassin. And the reason why I like it so much is they, they have what's called a bungsod. Bungsod is just fish farm in the Philippines. And it's just like this little mini shack in the middle of the ocean. And the nice thing is you get to see, you know, that their whole transition from picking fruit to then going over to this bungsod. And it's awesome. The sort of things they pull out the oceans and then they go sell them. It's like, here you go. They caught some lobsters in this one. I'll just hit it up. It's got lovely music as well. But there's their bungsod. 
out in the middle of nowhere. It's beautiful. It's idyllic. It's a slice of paradise. But, you know, they earn just enough money to put food on the table. And the rest of the time is swimming, diving. I mean, if you like diving, things like that. I mean, yes, they do do spear fishing. So if you don't want to see fish being speared, then it's probably not for you. But at the same time, they take their catches, they take it over, they get their money, they show you everything, how they live and how they go about things. Now, it is mainly in Tagalog, the dialect of the Philippines, but you can kind of get the gist of what's going on. Also, David, her husband, is English. Well, he speaks English. He's from Australia. But she interacts with him in English. So every other sentence is English and then a little bit of Tagalog. If you're like me and you've got a Filipino part partner, perfect channel for you for learning a heck of a lot of Tagalog and being entertained at the same time. If you're not like me, it's a bit of a niche channel, to be honest, people. But I want to put it on your radar because I think it's wholesome, decent quality entertainment. I mean, David, the Australian guy, doesn't even like eating fish. He doesn't like seafood. <laughs> He'd rather go and have, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken or something. So anyway, he's been gradually losing weight. But I know I shouldn't laugh, but he's gone back to Australia. I mean, it's the summer season there. He can now do a fruit picking and the money that he gets from the fruit picking, he can send over to Marie Lucene. So... There is that little bit of an imbalance now when it comes to the language barrier for a few episodes, but I'm hoping he'll come back. But she does say the odd thing in English anyhow. It's still a wholesome, great channel to watch. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping we get to see some videos sent from David from Australia over and it appears on the channel. I'd like to see what David's up to still. But yeah. Very good channel. I find it thoroughly entertaining. I hope you do too. Uh, me and Ivy are always stoked when we see a new episode pop up. And I'm hoping that at least, you know, if, if one out of a hundred of you like it, I think mission accomplished. You know, mission accomplished. I know that my tastes isn't everyone's tastes, but this entertains me. I hope it entertains you. I just think it's lovely to see a different way of life. A slower paced way of life, completely different to the rat race that we have here in the UK or perhaps even in the US. You know, it just goes to show that you don't have to climb corporate ladders. You could get yourself a bung sod in the Philippines. <laughs> anyway, so that's pretty much that. That's that's the channel that I want to put to you. Just let's just hit their channel once again so you can see their channel on screen. There you go. Marie Lassin official. There we go. She did have somebody that was actually downloading all of her videos and just uploading it onto another channel and ripping off her content, which is just bang out of order. Uh, gladly, that's that stopped now, people. But yeah, anyways, check that out. I think you, I think you'd like it. I know I like it. And something I super like is my Captain Steve's 07 Brew, which you can find on cherazina.co.uk. I said .com last time. People were like, can't find your website. Yeah, sorry. It's .co.uk. Anyways, yeah, and this mug is on my merch store. If you do want to grab yourself a cup of tea in the same mug as me, the same brew as me, now you've got all the deets to do so. I'm going to have a little sip. Now, if you do need the 07 Brew to be posted abroad, I would strongly suggest emailing cherazina.co.uk. They might come to some arrangement if you agree to pay some of the, the shipping cost. I don't know. Uh, sadly, it's not my company. It's run by somebody else. But the brew of tea is fantastically awesome. I guess it is. It's Luta Mondo. Anyway, goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again, people. Click the bell. Turn on notifications. Captain Steve's channel. Constant sensation, gaming flows. Gonna take you on a ride from movie reviews to strange things worldwide. Funny gameplay, capturing every move with a fresh perspective.